No story is really ever easy because you never know all of the information until sometimes weeks or even years after it happened. Um, you know, some stories are, are a bit cut and dry. You know, you have a car accident, let's say, and it ties up traffic for X number of hours and then they clear away the wreckage and the person injured is taken to the hospital and then basically it's over. Or is it? What caused the accident? Was there a malfunctioning light? Was there ice on a bridge that what, where, where drivers weren't warned and were going too fast. There are always other things to look at. And I think that's one of the challenges these days with um, television news. News has gotten so rapid fire and so quick. And a lot of times only 20 or 30 seconds is given to an item. And we don't always get to the underlying reason why things happen. And I think if there's one challenge out there for the new generation of broadcast journalists is to, uh, to venture to follow up and tell the why, where and when they can. I can remember trying to get into the station to start covering the flood. Um, it took me about three hours to drive from my home. It should be a 20 minute ride. And it, it became pretty evident on Saturday that weekend that I needed to be into the station. And that's when I started driving there in my four wheel drive and I'll never forget it. I was one of the last cars they let off I-40 at uh, White Bridge Road, Charlotte Pike exit, um, because the water at that point in time was up to the doors in my four wheel drive. And the, the police officer said, nope, no one else is coming through here. And I was like, I've gotta be on the air. The station's right there. And he was like, oh, Demetria, okay. I recognize you, but be careful. If you stall out, you know, you're just going to float away. So I just kind of, you know, kept driving and got to the station. Um, and then I think we spent the next 14 hours on the air without a break. And I mean without a bathroom break. Adrenaline takes over just like anything. And there was so much happening so rapidly in the flood um, that we just needed all hands on deck. Some of the most interesting stuff was the stuff unfolding right in front of the cameras live. And you have to be very careful with that because um, what you see isn't always what is actually occurring. And um, you know, the drama of the, of the horses that were being rescued out in the middle of uh, Bellevue in the, in the countryside and the drama of the uh, portable school building floating down the interstate and some of the other things that that unfolded that day. Um, we had a big challenge with keeping fog and moisture off the lens of the cameras. A lot of the video that you see will be almost like you're looking through a steamy shower door. But those are the kind of days that you remember and you live for in this business um, because that's when everyone gets together and you show your best. The most basic thing is don't worry about technology. Technology will change at least three more times before you get into that first job or, or, or maybe get established in a career. Um, just in the time that I've been in, in news, it went from waiting for film to develop to now there's not even tape or film of any kind. We go straight to a, a memory chip and, and coded information is, is, is the video and audio. So a lot of people are so worried about mastering the technology at this point. I, definitely have a good working knowledge of it, but none of that really matters. In the end, the one thing that's going to distinguish you as a storyteller and as a communicator is your ability to write, your, your ability to communicate, and your ability to do it quickly. We will never get away from the fact that deadlines are now every minute on the minute. We have 24-7 news. Back when I started, we, you know, you had all day until six o'clock. Your story didn't go on until six o'clock, so you had plenty of time to put it together. And then the, your next story didn't go on until 10 o'clock at night, so you had a little bit more time to put it together. Now, you may have to go with whatever you know in, in a matter of seconds and go live. So the ability to gather those thoughts, put it together, and the core of that is writing. When I started, there weren't as many females and, and we were being encouraged to enter the profession. Now I would say women probably outnumber men, maybe as much as two to one in, in some newsrooms. But the funny thing is they still aren't in all the decision-making roles. I would like to see some women, instead of just aspiring to be on camera, uh, to, to aspire to be the person making the decisions and, and to be in management, news management, 
and broadcast management across the board. I think that's still a place where women have not made their mark, have not had their voices heard adequately, and really could make a difference in terms of the, the approach that we take to, um, to television news, um, the coverage, the kind of things that we focus in on, the kind of material that we look at, and the way in which it's, it's produced. Um, I'd love to encourage more women to, to seek out management jobs and, and positions um, as, as their ultimate career goal. Um, there are always going to be some extra pressures on women. Um, a guy can get away with wearing the same gray suit. He changes his shirt and tie a couple times that week, and no one realizes he's worn the same thing. Conversely, if I wear the same thing tomorrow, I will hear about it in one way or another. And that's just inevitable, you know. I mean, people have opinions. People have opinions on appearance and hairstyles and jewelry and all sorts of things. But um, women have to have a bit of a tough skin if they go into this, because you will be criticized. Curiosity. You have to wonder, hey, I wonder why that happened. Hey, I wonder what's going on over there. If you don't have that basic curiosity at the root, you can call it, some people say you're nosy. If you want to know what's, you know, why, what, what people are saying over there, or why that crowd is gathered. If you don't have that basic curiosity, and not everyone does, journalism probably isn't the right job choice. But if you always have an idea of, hey, I really want to know what's going on, um, or if you cannot drive past something interesting and, you know, want to turn around and stop and figure out, hey, what's going on over there, um, then you probably, you know, don't have what it takes to stay in this line of work for a long time. And I think that's another thing that's valuable. Um, some people may say, oh, she's been here for 29, almost 30 years. It's time to give it up and hand it off to someone else, which may be. You know, everyone kind of gets tired and they want to slow down a little bit. But the amount of knowledge and history that you have in all that time is valuable for putting events into context. Um, when something happens downtown, a fire at a certain building, I can say, that same building burned about 15 years ago. Oh, funny, that person used to be involved in another sort of business. Oh, I've heard that person's name before. They were involved in another crime. I mean, you become almost an encyclopedia of, uh, of what's happened in a local community. And that longevity, I think, that's where it comes in. And we're really fortunate in Nashville. Each one of the stations have people that have been there for decades, not just me. Channel 2, Channel 5, so that sort of institutional knowledge of a community, I think, serves the viewers and makes the product better, too. But you got to be curious. you gotta, you got to want to know uh, to be able to tell effectively and to be able to tell the story in the right way and pick out the right little interesting fact that might get you to listen. Because let's face it, it's so crowded out there. You've got cell phones that are feeding you information and screens you can't walk into a grocery store now without seeing a screen feeding you information um, and you get, people are selective as to what catches their ear and what they're interested in and if you can really intrigue me and say and tell me something i've not heard before i'm going to sit down and watch and be moved either move to emotion or move to action and then we know we've done our job as journalists